Here's a story we all know. A person living an unremarkable life suddenly comes into a large amount of money, and they start to dream about how life can change for them and their family. Of course, their good fortune doesn't go unnoticed, and soon friends, family, neighbours, the whole town are all watching closely. Greed and temptation start to creep into the picture, and soon it feels less like a blessing and more like a curse. All those dreams start to feel more like a nightmare. Which is basically the plot of The Pearl by John Steinbeck. And now that I've told you what happens, why would you need to read it? Well, here's why. John Steinbeck is one of America's most celebrated novelists, perhaps best known for the Dust Bowl migration epic The Grapes of Wrath, or his multi-generational saga East of Eden. The Pearl is a much shorter experience, only about 100 pages long, but it still contains plenty of his trademark poetic style and insight into human nature. The book begins with a fragment of spoken storytelling, and it evokes a kind of campfire, folktale, oral tradition feel. In fact, Steinbeck apparently first heard the story on a trip to Mexico, and so framing it like this in his version gives it a kind of universal feel, straight off the bat. In the town, they tell the story of the Great Pearl, how it was found and how it was lost again. They tell of Kino, the fisherman, and of his wife, Juana, and of the baby, Coyotito. And because the story has been told so often, it has taken root in every man's mind. And as with all retold tales that are in people's hearts, there are only good and bad things, only black and white things, only good and evil things, and nothing in between. If this story is a parable, perhaps everyone takes his own meaning from it and reads his own life into it. In any case, they say in the town that and then Steinbeck's version begins. Kino awakened in the near dark. The stars still shone and the day had drawn only a pale wash of light in the lower sky to the east. The roosters had been crowing for some time. And the early we meet Kino, a poor fisherman. We see his frustration at being unable to afford a doctor for his sick baby son. He dreams of a different life. And then one day, his fortunes change. Kino deftly slipped the knife into the edge of the shell. Through the knife, he could feel the muscle tighten hard. He worked the blade lever-wise, and the closing muscle parted, and the shell fell apart. The lip-like flesh writhed up and then subsided. Kino lifted the flesh, and there it lay, the great pearl, perfect as the moon. It captured the light and refined it, and gave it back in silver incandescence. It was as large as a seagull's egg. It was the greatest pearl in the world. If for no other reason, read the pearl for that kind of lyrical quality that Steinbeck brings to the writing. At times it reads like an extended poem, full of imagery and music and rhythm and atmosphere. Even as the themes turn darker, or especially as the themes turn darker, the writing is always rich and vivid. There's a hard streak of truth in this book, and indeed in much of Steinbeck's writing. Kino and his wife do believe that their lives are about to change, but very soon a harsh reality sets in. They are indigenous people of the Americas, and so in the context of Mexico, as presented in this story at that time and place, they're basically second-class citizens. They soon come up against institutionalized corruption in the form of the characters of the Doctor and also the Pearl Dealers. Without giving away the details, this is one of the things that elevates the story from beyond a simple retelling of a folk tale and into something more powerful. It becomes a comment on the exploitation of indigenous people and the natural world in service of a dominant culture, something we see time and time again throughout history and in today's world. Steinbeck isn't just writing pretty pictures, he's holding up a mirror to our world. And so this isn't just a story about one man's dashed dreams, it's about how greed corrupts us and how that greed is hardwired into the societies we create. The Pearl is often referred to as a parable, essentially a short story or poem that contains a life lesson. 
it's supposed to contain a simple, universal truth. All cultures have these cautionary tales. They resonate with us because they speak to seemingly fixed aspects of the human experience. Even though stories like this and the messages that they contain may seem familiar, the fact is we need to keep hearing them. Okay, so we know greed corrupts, but take a look around. Does it look like the world has got the message yet? It's my belief that reading, rereading, and internalizing stories like the Pearl can help us live our lives in more authentic and integrated ways. There is so much vying for our attention in today's world, so much encouragement to be selfish, to be self-centered, so much of a fetish around the very idea of ambition. A simple yet profound story like The Pearl can help us see ourselves and our role in society with a little bit more clarity. Do we really want the thing we dream about? The Pearl will speak to you in different ways throughout your life, and so it deserves a place on your bookshelf so that you have the opportunity to enter and re-enter its world as the years go by. Religion has always understood this, encouraging their followers to revisit, time and again, Bible stories or Quranic verses so that they might be reminded how to avoid the mistakes of others. So even though you know the framework of the story of the pearl already, read it and reread it as an experience to enter into fully, like a song or a prayer or any other form of ritual art. And this is what great books can do for us. We re-enter their worlds time and again, not necessarily to pick up new information, but to be reminded viscerally, poetically, experientially, how to live. You've been watching The Portly Raven, where we devour great books and then crow about it. Please do like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support the creation of more books-related content just like this.